How's it going everyone? John here and welcome back to another Streamlabs OBS tutorial video. If this is your first time here on the channel and you're wanting to understand the technical side of streaming or just how to stream in general, be sure to go ahead and take a look at the other content on the channel and if you're enjoying it, definitely go ahead and subscribe. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about a few more options here inside of the settings. I've already gone over a few of them, so if you haven't seen those videos, definitely go ahead and check them out inside the playlist. So to get to the settings, you're going to click on this little tiny gear down here on the bottom left, and we're going to go all the way over here to audio. So for audio, this is very, very self-explanatory. You have different types of sample rates, channels, and then you have different types of devices that you can add. So if you click on here, you got the two options here, the 44.1 and then the 48. To see what yours is going to be, you're going to want to click on the properties for your device to figure out you know, what you want that audio device to be set to. And you should be able to see what the sample rate is going to be for that particular audio device in its properties. But you got to go to the sound settings on your Windows computer, not inside of Streamlabs. So then you also have the option of setting this to mono, stereo, and then you have different types of like channels and stuff like that. So you can choose those other ones if you have them. I just leave mine on stereo. Now, if you have different types of desktop devices, microphones, and everything like that, you can set it up to however you want. So you can leave it at default, or you can select the ones that are on your computer, and then just make sure you disable the second one. And then for microphones, if you have multiple microphone devices and stuff like that, you can add them all in here, and that way you can adjust them if you have multiples in here. And this would be probably something that you would see musicians use. They would have like different types of inputs for their devices and everything like that, or music and stuff like that. And they, that way they can adjust all those sounds for them. So like I said, this is very self-explanatory stuff. And we're going to move on to hotkeys. Now, I know that I, did, I, I skipped video because video, uh, this one here, I kind of went over on a previous video. But basically, just a quick rundown for this one, um, just so, in case you guys have any questions. The, the base canvas, you're going to set it up however you want it to be. Uh, usually 1080p is what people use, or 720p. If you decide you want to downscale the output, then you just want to go to the next one underneath. So if it's 1080p, you downscale to 720p to keep the sharpness, and then you use the bicubic to hold on to that sharpness when scaling. And then just leave this on common FPS value, and then you're going to set this to either be 30 or 60. You kind of have other ones in between, but it just kind of matters on what you're trying to do for your stream. If you want it to be a 60 uh, frames per second, or if you want it to be 30 frames per second. the They have integer and fractional, um, or fractional, I can't even speak. <laughs> so we're just going to leave it on, on common for that one. And then you have different options here too. So if you're not going to downscale, then just go ahead and leave it for the bilinear. Bilinear. Jeez, I can't talk today. <laughs> and then um, you have these different options here for whenever you're going to be downscaling and stuff like that. And then same thing with the base canvas. So that's, that's pretty much how that all works. So hotkeys. This I don't even use, as you guys can tell. I don't use hotkeys at all. There's so many things here that you can add for, for hotkeys. And that's just because of all the different sources that you have added. So basically, what you do is you give one of these things a kind of... Hey, I was looking at that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to scroll. Let me grab it. Oh, fine, whatever. Uh, so basically what it's doing here is it allows you to either add some type of button on your keyboard to allow you to either start the stream or start like something on one of your scenes or hide a scene or hide a, a widget on your scene or stuff like that. So it just allows you to do what a stream deck does, but honestly, you might as well just get a stream deck. But if you can't get a stream deck, this is still a good option to start with. So if you click on like the plus here it's going to allow you to have multiple. You can get rid of one. If you click in here, you give it whatever button you want it to be on your keyboard, and then you'll be able to start the stream, end the stream, start recording, same thing, yada, yada. I mean, this stuff is, like I said, really self-explanatory. But with there being so many of the options here, you're going to eventually run out of keyboard spots. And then if you're playing a game and you need one of those, those hotkeys, 
that you set up for something to do in one of your games, then you're going to run into that problem to where you're going to accidentally hit something and it's going to mess something up on the screen. So just keep that in mind. That's why I say invest in a stream deck if you can. But that is those two. Well, I should say three. Uh, but if you guys have any questions or if there's anything that I had missed, definitely let me know inside of the comments. And if you guys want to reach out to me, you can always reach out to me when I'm streaming. I stream over on Twitch. And you guys can also talk to me over on the Discord as well. All that stuff is in the video description below. But I'll see you guys in a future video. And thank you so much for watching.